Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. All right, I'll admit it. I thought the Cavs hiring of John Beeline wasn't too bad of a decision. It was a five-year deal, and Beeline's resume and his reputation were impeccable. As it turned out, however, he had trouble relating to young players, and he didn't do well with veterans either. That's a bad combination in the NBA. I thought Beeline understood the situation, but the wear and tear of an 82-game season with plenty of back-to-back -back games apparently was something he couldn't really handle, along with the losing that went with it. You can blame Dan Gilbert for a lot of things, but not for this one. As for Beeline, well, if he's the one wanting out before that five years is up, he shouldn't be entitled to a penny more than the amount of games he actually coached in his first year. Certainly not worth the four more years that he originally signed for. The D-man Dennis Maniloff is here. More sports and Les Levine is on the air. From the Worldwide Headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it's a Monday night. It's a brand new week. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine into our 24th consecutive year and seen, and seen exclusively right here on Cleveland.com. The D-Man, Dennis Maniloff, is here. Hello, D-Man. Well, Les, only in Cleveland can you have a highly touted coach, uh, admittedly from the college ranks, Potentially not even make it out of his first season by virtue of a tap out. It may not have made it to the All Star break. I mean, you can't make uh, this stuff up. No, only you in can't. Cleveland. We're going to talk about that and more, but uh, I know you want. Yeah. You got something else on your mind, so fire away. Les, I've been itching to go uh, since this weekend. First of all, I want to ask you: Am I a hot take guy? Hot take guy? Yeah. No. I'm not no. somebody who relies. Am no. I bash the commissioner guy? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I needed that because I'm going to go ahead and just tear into MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred. I wanted to have some credibility in this bash. Um, Rob Manfred made a disastrous situation even worse, and I didn't think that was possible, given his conduct and his comments this past weekend in relation to the Astros cheating scandal. Now, I have my phone here, and I have the quotes that bother me the most. Uh, from an ESPN story, you did an interview with Carl Ravitch of ESPN. In the context of my original decision, something that we talked about and analyzed extensively, said Manfred of potentially stripping the Astros of the 2017 title. Big topic of conversation between me and my senior staff. It's never happened in baseball. I'm a believer in the idea that precedent happens, and when you deviate from that, you have to have a very good reason. The report gave people a transparent account of what went on. We put people in position to make their own judgments about the behavior that went on. That certainly has happened over the last month. So that's your rationale for not stripping them of their title in 17. You gave, you gave us the information. You thought about it, but you decided not to do it because of precedent. Well, what kind of precedent are you setting now, Mr. Commissioner? When uh, Cheaters can... Keep it, go ahead and cheat, and they won't have their title stripped, Apparently. right? Well, That's your precedent. What is he saying? He's saying that, that there's no reason to do what they did, for example, in uh, 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 1994 when there was no World Series. It says no World Series, well, no champ. Yeah, he's condescendingly, arrogantly saying, you know what? If you're going to do something like that, it better be for a damn good reason. Well, you know what, Co uh, Commissioner Manfred? This is a good reason to strip a team of a title. There's no and you're reason. apparently punning on it. Oh, not apparently. You did. But you doubled down on arrogant, pompous, condescending, out of touch, stupid. Did I leave out any pejoratives? With this, gem, the idea of an asterisk or asking for a piece of metal back seems like a futile act. People will always know that something was different about this 2017 season, and whether we make the decision right or wrong, whether we made the decision right or wrong, we undertook a thorough investigation and had the intestinal fortitude to share the results of that investigation, even though, even when those results were not very pretty. Oh, 
Congratulations, Commissioner Manfred. You had intestinal fortitude to flush out cheaters in your own game. Oh, yeah. Boy, don't hurt yourself patting yourself on the back there, Buster. And what a, the, the piece of metal, which, by the way, has caused a firestorm throughout Major League Baseball. The piece Baseball. of metal meaning the trophy. He's talking about the trophy. He could go and take that physical trophy from the Astros and, re, and, and take it out of their possession. Oh, I don't want to do it. I, I, I think it's a futile act to go get a piece of metal. Let me, say, let me ask you something, uh, Mr. Manfred. What do you think that the hockey players call that cup, that the Stanley Cup? Is that just a piece of metal? Is that just another cup? I believe it represents the championship of the season. I mean, and by the way, the MLB trophy is called the Commissioner's Trophy. Last time I checked. What a disgrace, Rob Manfred, uh, his performances this weekend. Right, speaking Awful. Of and by the way, it wasn't just the Ravitch interview. It was, an, it was an arrogant presser Sunday night as well uh, where he did nothing but hurt himself and hurt his game. Okay, so what is he afraid of? A collective bargaining situation where he gave uh, immunity to these people uh, Clearly, to, to get information? Yes. Clearly he was afraid that if he punished players, if he or the MLB yep. punished players, the players' union would file grievances, and I, and you'd have the the tie-ups and all the you know whatever it goes into the grievances, and the players would fight it. Okay, but to me, even if I grant you that, and I let you get away with not punishing any players, there's no reason why you can't strip the Astros of that title. Now that you've admitted it, I wasn't sure he was he was allowed to do it, given the CBA. Right. But he's saying here he was. They gave it strong consideration and ultimately decided no, going after the the piece of metal is a futile act. Okay, so he continues on, and now you've got a couple of guys who made not totally sincere apologies, and the owner of the uh, Houston Astros. What an embarrassing performance that was! Disgrace. Jim Crane, you're going to sit there and tell me Jim Crane didn't know anything about this? Come on now. That's ridiculous. Well, he knew he about it, but he, he even didn't says, know anything about yeah, it. Yeah, but he even says, well, what's the big deal? I don't, I don't think that that uh, is bad. I don't think there's any uh, way that this helps a batter. Yeah, no, he said really. it didn't affect the game. And then uh, I think Jeff Passan of ESPN had a question literally 30 seconds later, and he said, I never said that. So he contradicted his own comment made within a minute. I mean – I've never seen, though, a commissioner make a situation exponentially worse. And by the way, it was already horrible. But Manfred has poured kerosene on a horrible situation. And here's the thing. How do I know that it's a terrible situation? Because players everywhere are coming out. Mike Trout. You get Mike Trout, the most non-controversial superstar in the history of the game, to come out and, and take shots. You know there's something going on. These players are irate. They should be. Oh, and then here's the worst. Of, well, not the worst of it. Here's more, Les. Dusty Baker, the new manager of the Astros, tells MLB, I want you to protect my players from retaliation. So Manfred comes out this weekend and says, we will not tolerate pitchers uh, teeing off on, on, our, uh, on Astros hitters. So you can't come inside? Now what? Now what have you done, Manfred? If I'm a pitcher and I'm trying to move Alex Bregman's feet, innocently, honestly trying to move his feet, yeah. with no thought about the controversy, and I throw one in and hit him in the ribs, you're telling me I might get warned if not suspended, or I mean if not ejected right away? No, what other, what other recourse does he have? He has no other recourse. So you're telling me now that the cheat, by virtue of cheating, the Astros have cried for protection, and now they're getting it from MLB, and they can eliminate half the plate because the commissioner said, we're going to be watching you for retaliatory measures. 216-575-0403. You can email us during the show at reallesslevine at gmail.com. Big news as far as the Cavaliers are concerned. We uh, wake up to news that John Beeline apparently wants out. Uh, whether I, I, I think the upshot will be the, the next game is uh, Friday night in, in Washington, but I don't think he's coaching that game. I 
would find it hard to believe less that uh, the coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers on Friday night is John Beeline. When this kind of report is leaked or is is uh, reported, I don't want to discredit the guys who reported. I think Lynn Windhorst and uh, Wojnarowski of ESPN. When that comes out, uh, you can't walk that back. Okay, if you're a player on the Cavaliers and you read or hear about this. Why in the world would you ever want to see John Beeline on your sideline no, again? You wouldn't. If you have any self-respect as a player, you're like, hey, John, uh, nice knowing you, pal. Well, that, that was after the, the slug th- uh, mention that he had a couple of weeks ago. Thugs and slugs. Yeah. I mean, it's been a disaster for Beeline every which way you slice it. Well, Beeline signed a five-year contract prior to this year. That was in May of 2019. Began the season with a record of uh, four and five. And since then, uh, look at what it is. Reportedly referred to his team as a bunch of thugs. He meant slugs. He lost uh, 133 to 92 to the Clippers uh, last week. Worst home loss in the history of the uh, of the team. The second worst record in the NBA behind Golden State. Listen, we all knew this was going to be a rebuild. Is this part of a rebuild? This and is he year knew it two. Also. He knew it. And but you know what? I even for a rebuild, this has been a disaster. And here's what I also wonder, Les. Clearly, there's a disconnect between uh, Beeline and Love and probably between Beeline and Thompson. You wonder if Beeline was one, was waiting to see if Love and or Thompson got moved at the trade deadline. Right. And once that didn't happen, well, you knew he had two games until the All-Star break. He's probably saying, I really don't want to go through the end of the season with uh, coaching these guys. No, but his team got better at the trade deadline. Uh, you would think so, yes, but it's – I mean, I'm, and I'm not saying that that's what it is. I'm not saying that's what pushed uh, Beeline to the brink. Clearly, he was in over his head. He has been in over his head. The only question now is the monetary uh, settlement. How much th- are the Cavs be going to be willing to give him? If he's, if he's resigning, he's not entitled to anything. Well, and that's the point. I don't think Beeline is going to want to resign if, he, if it means he can't get a decent chunk of cash. Well, in that case, what do the Cavs do? Do they force him to continue coaching them? Well, apparently the two of them, Dan Gilbert and uh, John Beeline, were supposed to meet today. We don't know the results of that if it in fact in fact happened. In fact, we uh, got our first news about uh, Dan Gilbert uh, just uh, yesterday. Uh, he's back to work uh, at his Detroit office one or two days a week using a wheelchair and accompanied by a service dog. He says he gets tired very easily. Everything is, is hard to do which is understandable. He's set to make his uh, first public speech since the stroke, and that'll be on uh, Friday. And uh, he'll have the added addition of uh, having to deal with John Beeline. Yeah. I mean, what a what a difficult uh, circumstance uh, in which to come back. I mean, but listen, this is an untenable situation with Beeline. You've got Bickerstaff on your staff. Uh, he's a, I wouldn't say a perfect interim but he's a guy you could drop well, that, in there. That's you, why he's there. Yeah. You figured he was going to replace Beeline at right. some point anyway. Uh, why can't it be for the final however many games it is, whether they 54 so, in, so now so you've 28? Had, in, re, in the last couple of years, you had David Blatt's situation. You got Teron Liu, yeah. and, and now you have this. Yeah. It's almost, again, it's OIC, 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 because in Blatt's case, you know, you, you try to break, get a Euro star, a Euro league coaching star right. to come in here and, that was and coach they LeBron had Le- James. Well, you didn't have LeBron. Oh, right, you time. didn't have LeBron. And now then then once he comes in, you're trying to coach him. T. Lou, OIC, that you fire the coach who just won the championship uh, in, you know, less than a year and a half right. after that. So uh, it, it's just unbelievable. But it, you, it, but it is believable. Did you know the believable. Ohio Lottery has paid out over a billion dollars in winnings over the last six months? People are winning in record numbers. Winning is happening all over the state of Ohio. Play an Ohio Lottery game and play it today. You can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash more sports and less Levine. New content is posted each and every day. Mike Tomlin got into the action. Miles Garrett versus Mason Rudolph. We'll talk about that and more with Dennis Maniloff. More sports and less Levine continues exclusively on cleveland.com. Presque Isle Downs and Casino has sports betting. Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino.
As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin Wallace, so I started at Baldwin Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. This portion of More Sports and Less Levine brought to you by Northeast Factory Direct. Wally Pipp sat out a day and Lou Gehrig played for the next 100 years. Jim Brown, listen, if Dee Haslam is looking for what kind of uniforms they have next year or uh, April, just look at that right there with Jim Brown and that's what you have. Just, and don't go into this different uniform for every game. How he did it, I don't know how he did it. Michael Jordan, can you believe Michael Jordan and Jim Brown on the same day? 17th of February, Case Keenum. Can you Taylor believe Gabriel? Case Keenum, Michael Jordan, and Jim <laughs> Brown on the same you know, day? That I believe, no question <laughs> about that. All right, Miles Garrett, a uh, little upset no. with uh, <laughs> uh, Mason Rudolph, and now Mike Tomlin gets into the action. What do you think? I mean, if you're going to prompt this type of reaction from Mike Tomlin, then I'm starting to wonder because Mike Tomlin does not go to television to get his message across. He's out there on ESPN challenging an ESPN story when he's talking to Stephen yeah. A. Smith. Right. And Mike Tomlin, who is, who is black, has absolutely positively hitched his wagon to Mason Rudolph. In even this, though Mason, Mason may not even be on the team next year. It, well, exactly. It, it's not like he's defending uh, T.J. Watt or, or Rocklisberger or, or some star. He's defending a guy who he demoted behind Devlin Hodges after Rocklisberger was out. But here's Mike Tomlin, a, a, an established Super Bowl-winning NFL head coach who happens to be one of the few black head coaches right. in the league, sticking up vehemently challenging Miles Garrett. Now, he said in his interview, I was listening to him, he says, I'm not here necessarily to dump on, well, he didn't use the word dump, but dump on Garrett as opposed to I'm here to support Mason Rudolph. Well, when you're supporting Mason Rudolph, you're challenging the veracity of what right. Miles Garrett said. Well, what do you think, Miles? It's that simple. He, let's, let's play both sides of the fence here. Let's say... Uh, Rudolph might have said, let's say Rudolph did say what, what is alleged here. Um, is the day after Miles Garrett gets reinstated, should he be talking about that? Or is that part of the deal that you may as well come, come, come uh, true with the facts? Les, I said this on, on the radio show on WTAM. I didn't think he should. And then I had a caller say, hey, Dennis, you're always one who says you want athletes to be transparent. I do. But there's a difference between being transparent and being reckless. He didn't need to do that. He could still be transparent about a lot of other things, dinosaurs, <laughs> jazz, outwork, uh, artwork, sacking the quarterbacks. Keep your mouth, keep it closed in that matter. Because here's the thing, Les. You just got reinstated to your livelihood, and you could potentially make, because of that reinstatement, I mean, you never knew what was going to happen. Well, it could be another $50 million. If, if he had named... If he had maimed Mason Rudolph with that helmet, he may never have played another down. So he's reinstated to potentially make fifty to a hundred million dollars more in his career, and he celebrates it by doubling down on this. I, I mean, and here's the other thing, Miles. When it happened, and you said what you said in the hearing, and then you got suspended, and nothing came of it from the league. 
What makes you think that now that you say it again, the yeah. league is going to go, you know what, Miles? You're yeah. right. On second thought, Mason Rudolph did say yeah. what you said he did, me, uh, and here's the tape. Let me just go into this, uh, the, this drawer here in my desk, and let me pull out the tape. Yeah. They're not gonna. They're not gonna uh, go against what they originally no. said, which I, is there's no evidence. Let's see what Miles Garrett had to say on ESPN regarding the uh, situation with Mason Rudolph. Here you go. Most quarterbacks wear mics on their helmets. He somehow lost his helmet and had to get another one without a mic. There were guys there who were mic'd uh, near me, uh, near us during uh, that time, who didn't hear anything. And from what I've heard. They've been uh, they've been audio uh, during that. Uh, there had been audio during that game, and uh, could have heard what was uh, actually said, or they could not have heard what was actually said. Something uh, was afraid, or someone was afraid, and whether that uh, NFL wants to acknowledge it, that's up to them. I, I gotta Thanks. believe that if they didn't. They didn't remove the microphones before this happened no, on purpose. The, the NFL says they shut the mics off once the snap occurs or whatever. Right. But here's the point, though. You're Miles Garrett. You've just been reinstated by the league that is, in, resp is responsible for your livelihood. Correct. And, and, and your potential earnings for generations to come. And you then say that the, uh, that, that league is conspiratorial and is hiding something uh, that would back your claim. Let's see what Mason Rudolph had to say in response to that. Here you go. Boldface lie. I did not, have not, and wouldn't utter uh, a racial slur. This is disgusting, and uh, it's an attempt to assassinate my character. Hey, listen, uh, Les, if it, had, if it were just Miles versus Rudolph, that's one thing. But now that Mike Tomlin is Full blown into this, okay? He is defending Rudolph, so you might as well be. It might as well be Miles versus Rudolph and uh, and he, Tomlin. He's de he's defending his third string quarterback, right? And Tomlin is saying this will not stand while I'm the coach. He's claiming he has people that he knows on the Browns who said nothing of a racial epithet uttered. He said he was on the field and talked to people, and never once did a rape, racial epithet come up in the conversations that he had. So, again, if if Mike Tomlin, who has a lot of credibility, is willing to go to these lengths to defend Mason Rudolph, I start to wonder exactly what's going on. East, West, and South, that's where you're going to find uh, Northeast Factory Direct, and you're going to find it at West 140th Street, Lakeland Boulevard in Euclid, as well as the Freeway Drive, that's in Macedonia. And you can also go to northeastfactorydirect.com and you're going to save, uh, well, you're going to save more than 50% or 100, or, let me take that back. You're going to save more than 50% and more on some of the great items. You'll check it out. Mattresses, beds, hot tubs, kitchen cabinets, furniture. They all got it all at northeastfactorydirect.com. When we come back, we'll take a look at the Browns. They made some roster cuts today. More sports and less Levine continues exclusively on cleveland.com. Celebrate NatureStone's 30-year anniversary with a free NatureStone floor. During 2020, we will be giving away 30 free floors to 30 very lucky customers to say thank you for making NatureStone the best concrete flooring solution for garages, basements, and more. Call or visit NatureStone.com today to register to win, and we'll send you a copy of our new buyer's guide absolutely free. There's no purchase necessary. Winners will be chosen monthly. With over 30 million square feet installed for more than 60,000 customers, it's easy to see why I always say, it's not just a floor. Wow, it's NatureStone. Just because I'm not a million dollar price doesn't mean I'm worthless. We middle prices get zero respect. We're worth hundreds, even thousands. I mean, I'm a handsome bag of money. And there's $110 million worth of us in the Ohio Lottery Cash Celebration scratch off alone. Plus, the odds of winning are off the chart. One in three. Play the $30 cash celebration for a chance to win up to a million dollars. You see? Oh, <clears throat> uh, and lots of prizes between $100 and $1,000. Everybody wants a million. Would 500 bucks be so bad? Come on. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen for old world traditions or original experiences. 
From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget, Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just the mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Let's check out a uh, How Come Quickie. How come it appears like the Cavaliers head coach is trying to make a beeline to get out of Cleveland? <laughs> it's too easy. That, that pun has never been. The, no. the beeline pun has been used a lot. But, yeah. uh, again, Les, you mentioned it at the top with your outstanding opening. I mean, what a disaster uh, this has been for uh, even by rebuilt standards. I, I wonder what happens This season has been an utter you chaotic think, mess. You think he goes back to some big time college program? Or do you I think, think he just Beeline, walks away and says, thank you very much? Uh, at his age, well, you know what? You could say, depending on how much money he extracts yeah. out of the Cavs, is he going to be able to retire to a, an island in the, uh, well, you know, in the Bahamas? Three but, million a year for, for five years um, was the original deal. Listen, I, I can't, if, he's, if he's resigning, though, I can't believe he should get anything. Well, in theory, you would think as someone who resigns wouldn't get anything beyond what they've already done. But, right. but as I said, Les, the Cavs all of a sudden are in a tight spot because if Beeline says, I'm not leaving unless you give me this much, and the Cavs say, well, no, we're not doing that. We're going to force you to earn it. Well, then why, if you're the Cavs, would you want John Beeline coaching your team another day? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. So there might be some number in there to make everybody happy. You would hope there would be a compromise because Beeline's got to go. He's toxic. He's got to go. All right. The Browns uh, made some cuts today to make, uh, make some room. Let's take a look at the four players they cut. T.J. Carey, the cornerback, Demetrius Harris, Eric Cush, and Adarius Taylor. And uh, that saves, uh, what, $13 million in cash, cap space? Yeah, it, I mean, no surprises on that list at all. Carey no, was a, can still play. Carey, yeah, but he, you know what? He was making too much for yeah. his contribution level. A, a good guy by all accounts, but making too much. Signed a four-year deal, $31 million with the uh, Browns in uh, 2018. His release saves the Browns uh, that much in cap space. 126 tackles, two interceptions, and... Uh, in two seasons with the Browns. Yeah, a solid contributor and a good clubhouse guy, but that a locker room guy, but that's not enough uh, to justify that contract. No, but a guy that they're going to have to make a decision on is Joe Schobert, who was here when uh, Andrew Berry was here yeah. the first time around. There are some other uh, free agents out there. Here you see Joe Schobert, 6'1", 245, 133 tackles, a couple of sacks, four INTs, and... Uh, of that in 2019, made the Pro Bowl in 2017, led the, the whole league with 144 tackles, six interceptions, and uh, that's in his career, a total of seven forced fumbles. That's a pretty good resume. Oh, it is, and he's going to want to get paid. All right, here are some guys who are available. Corey Littleton, 26 years old, and uh, 134 tackles, three and a half sacks, two INTs, a couple of forced fumbles. That was in 2019, six INTs, one defensive touchdown in his career. Let's continue to look at some other names. Blake Martinez is another one. 237 pounds, 6'2", 155 tackles, three sacks, one INT, one forced fumble in 2019. Had at least 144 tackles in each of his last three seasons. Career high of sacks with five in 2015. Let's continue on. Jamie Collins, who the Browns saw. <laughs> Collins was with New England. No, came thanks. to the Browns and then went back to New England. You don't want him? No. 6'3", 255, 80 tackles, 7 sacks, 3 INTs in uh, 2019. Made the Pro Bowl in 2015. 10 INTs, 16 forced fumbles. That's in his career. I, listen, we, we don't need uh, Jamie Collins 2.0 in Cleveland. Sorry. All right, should the Browns re-sign Joe Schobert or should they move him on and go after somebody else? They absolutely should. But having said that, is, it, is the price tag going to be too rich for the, the Browns' blood? And this is where 
you know, Barry and the, and, and the analytics boys have to figure out, okay, how good – you would think Schobert is an analytics darling. I mean, he doesn't right. blow you away with these sensational highlight reel plays, but he does grade well consistently with the PFFs and whatnot. So you would think they would look at him favorably, but even if they do look at him favorably, are they going to want to pay him what he thinks he's yeah. worth? Well, D-Man, you, you hear about these guys and they say, well, the organization likes so-and-so. Well, that, that's fine when you have the same organization, but because Cleveland changes so much, you have no idea what they're thinking about the, the guys who'd been here before. Correct. Correct. And, and it will be, uh, it'll be an interesting litmus test for this front office, the, uh, the Schobert, how they handle the Schobert situation. Well, before uh, you do anything else, you want to check your interests and find a program that puts you on a path to a bright future. Tri-C offers more than 1,000 courses in over 140 career and technical programs. Go to tri-c.edu to find out uh, more information. Mike Massetta from NatureStone will check in. We're going to find out what uh, Mike is thinking. D-Man is thinking stuff also. More sports and less living continues exclusively on cleveland.com. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin Wallace, so I started at Baldwin Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students kindergarten through 12th grade can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at smileyone.com. Let's take a look at this day in uh, sports history brought to you by Smiley One Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. 1995, not wanting to manage replacement players, Detroit Tigers manager Sparky Anderson takes a leave of absence from Major League Baseball. Didn't want yeah. to get involved. As then, we know, that the 95 season got started late, uh, coming off of the, the, the season that saw no World Series because of the work stoppage, and the Indians wind up going 144. 100 wins, 44 losses, yeah. 144 games. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Checking out some How Come Quickies that we'll get to a little bit later on. We've got a pretty good, pretty good stuff, as, as usual. You always have a good stack. No, not, not always. The, I was on uh, 92.3 The Fan on Friday, and Mr. Gullible called in. He turns out, turns out he's the III man. Who knew? Gullible is? Yeah. That's I, actually disappointing. Why? Because I don't like the III guy. <laughs> Until I, I guess until I found out it was gullible. Now yeah. maybe I have to like him. All right, uh, what's my, we'll get to Mike uh, momentarily. Let's take a, take a look at a couple of emails here. See what people have to say. Langdon has this to say: Not long ago, it was revealed the Cavs' first-round pick would not play a minute this past season, and I wrote you and uh, Kobe Altman was having a rough year with everything going on the past two years. You meet. This is a, a copy that was sent to Jeff Phelps. You disagreed at the time, but I don't think you can make the same defense. Now if John Beeline is thinking of stepping down before the, uh, his first season is over. That's a massive failure of the entire organization. Point blank, it was stupid, reckless hire that made no sense. I uh, in, I agree. in retrospect, it, it seems that way, but I, I, I put most of this blame on Beeline. However, there is a, a fraction of blame for me on the fact that you were gambling 
on a college coach in his late 60s right. who had never been an NBA head coach. You say, well, why do you bring up the age? Well, because he was so ingrained in the college game for so many decades. And, and, and frankly, was tired of recruiting. Yeah, that was part of and it. you're asking him now to all of a sudden learn a new game, a new language, yeah. a new travel pattern, new right, practice the, pattern. Here's the only thing to do at a time like this. Blame Mike Massetta from Nature's Home. <laughs> Mike, it's all Can't your fault. Can't blame Mike for anything. Hey, I'll, 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 take, I'll take the blame for this. If, <laughs> if, if, as long as we can find a coach that can turn the season around. I'll Mike, that. Mike <laughs> did, you, yeah. did you send in your resume to one center court to potentially yeah. <laughs> replace Beeline on Friday? I, thought, I don't know if there's too many uh, uh, five-foot, six-inch coaches in the NBA, <laughs> but if there are, my resume is going. <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, you know, what, yeah. what is unbelievable to me, just in a blanket statement, and Mike Massetta is with us from Nature Stone. Wow, it's Nature Stone. Um, you, you take a look at, at this team, uh, the Cavaliers, and, and you look at the uh, Cleveland Browns, and you see how fast they go through coaches and change the organization and do whatever they do. And now I got a pile of emails here complaining about the Indians. All they do is win, have winning seasons and, uh, and, and challenge for the postseason. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing really to complain about with the Indians. Um, you know, I mean, I guess you could you can make the case that they don't sign their uh, their talent long term uh, after they've you know they've, they've they've proven themselves as being a, a elite uh, player. But you can make that case about probably ninety percent of the teams in the Major League Baseball. How about there's, there's only how about Bryce Harper doesn't get signed by uh, Washington? All they do is go ahead and win the World Series. Well, yeah, that's exactly. I mean, Harper, uh, he, he got his $300 plus million dollar contract, but that Washington team was a team, and they're built around a pitching staff that's tremendous. And anybody who, who knows baseball knows that you can win championships with a great pitching staff and an average offense. And, and that's, that's what you're seeing, is you're seeing a trend towards that. And the Indians have a great pitching staff, and what will likely be an average offense, if they can score enough runs to support that pitching staff, they've got as good a shot as the, as the Nationals did. All right, let me throw this out to both of you. I go in to do radio last week on Friday, and I'm handed a thing, the, the, the uh, thing about Mike Clevenger that we didn't know about until that day. Right. How, how much is that going to – they did without Clevenger at the beginning of last year. Uh, how much is this going to hurt this team, or, or are they still solid enough that, that they'll be okay till he gets back? I'm not worried. I, I, I know what Mike's going to say, but I, I'm not worried about it because, number one, it's not an ACL. Yes, six to eight weeks, but that's middle of April. It's not like he injured it in the first month of the season. Uh, number two, it's his landing leg, not his plant or not his uh, push-off leg. Number three, they have rotation depth. Even having moved Kluber and now Clevenger injured, you can still run out there. Bieber, Carrasco, Savali, Plesak, Jeffrey Rodriguez, and Pletko. Out of, there's six guys there. Presumably Pletko and Rodriguez battling for the five spot. So if any team can absorb a loss injury-wise to a rotation, it's the Indians. Isn't that amazing? They lose uh, Kluber and they, uh, uh, Trevor Bauer on top of that. And now Clevenger, you don't know what you're going to have with uh, Carlos Carrasco. Mike, are you still happy with this uh, situation, even though they're going to miss uh, Clevenger for six to eight weeks? Well, I, I, I got to say, I'm with D-Man on this. Because they have the pitching depth, uh, Clevenger's only going to be out until May at the latest. It's not like he's going to miss, you know, up to the All-Star break. Right. Um, if he comes back at 100%, he won't even miss him. He won't even realize he was out for that month. And the, the, the big winner in all this is Aaron Savale. Aaron Savale is one of the best pitchers on their staff. That, that, that kid is phenomenal. And because of this injury, that could force the Indians to have to keep him in the rotation in April. And, and, and that may end up allowing him to stay in the rotation for the year if he pitches well. And, and this kid's the real deal. And I know that they don't want to have him in the staff for money reasons. I think that whatever, whatever the deal is where, where he's got to pitch um, so, many, so many innings, and then it counts as a full year under his, uh, yeah. um, you, you know, his, his arbitration or whatever it might be. So they, they, they want to hold off on him. 
but this injury may force them to have to pitch him in April, and, and, and this kid is special. He's, 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 a, he's a very, very good pitcher. And I think, I think Plutko is going to make this rotation – because he's out of options, uh, and I think they like him enough. Now, he, he didn't exactly blow anybody's doors off. He wasn't nearly as impressive as Savali when he came up or Plesek when he came up. But, um, yeah, I mean, nobody wants to lose a talent the caliber of Clevenger, but if any team could do it and, and survive it, it would be the Indians. All right, what are you thinking about? The, it looks like there's a 10-man group of outfielders on this team. And I heard Terry Francona talking today about, about Naquin and saying how, how thrilled he is with him. And that is a guy I hadn't even thought about uh, making, yeah. making this team until at least the All-Star break. Yeah. You got a thought? I, I'm, I mean, not a fan. I'm not a big fan. Listen, first of all, left field belongs to loop low against lefties and maybe a platoon, maybe a lefty like Bowers. But at the very least, loop low is going to be ma mashing against lefties as he usually does. In center, I, I say you give it to Mercado until he can't do it, and right. I think he can. I think Mercado is a star in the making. Right field belongs to Reyes if he can hack it out there. You di you didn't, <laughs> he can hack it. <laughs> well, you didn't sign Domingo Santana to sit him, so Domingo Santana to me is your DH and Reyes is your right fielder. I don't see uh, any more in that crowded outfield emerging other than a platoon partner potentially with Luplo. What are you thinking, Mike? I, I, I agree. I, I actually think Domingo uh, will probably play more right field in a platoon-type situation, even though they're both right handed hitters. But in a platoon-type situation with Reyes, look, they're, they're, both, they're both not great uh, defensive outfielders. And Domingo's they're, terrible. They're going yeah, they're, they're going to allow those two to, uh, to get about 80 games each in, assuming they play the whole 150. Uh, you get about 80 games each in the outfield, in my opinion. I think Mercado is your guy in center field. I, I agree with with, uh, um, with He hasn't done anything to not deserve to be the center fielder, so, so why, would you, why would you move him? And uh, he's a star in the making. And then, uh, uh, yeah, Luke Will is going to be in, in left against the uh, lefties for sure. Um, and then they've got a number of options to use as that platoon guy to put the base right. He's Bowers being one of them. I like Bowers because he can also play first base. All right, let so me throw this. You an option at first base too. Let me throw this at both of you. If <clears throat> if the uh, Indians uh, surprise some people and and stay in contention through most of the year, who's the guy that pitching wise and uh, uh, lineup wise, who's the guy that has to? Be the, not the surprise, but the guy that has to start out fast and continue it. Who's the, who's the guy that is most necessary for this team, besides obviously Lindor? These are going to sound like obvious answers, but Carrasco, uh, you, he's such an X factor to me because you're trying to have him pitch a full season as a starter with leukemia. So that he would be my answer there and on the rotation side. And the position player side, also obvious, Jose Ramirez. Because Ramirez, we've seen him as an MVP candidate, and we've seen him as a guy who couldn't get out of his own way in the batter's box. So, to me, those are the two critical pieces. How about you, Mike? I, I was going to say the same too, but for sake of argument, I'm going to change him. Uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with, on the pitching staff, I'm going to go with, with, with uh, the combination of, of Car Car Carcinic, uh Clase, and Hand. I think those three guys, if they pitch well at the back end of the bullpen, uh, they, that could be one of the most dominant back three in, 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 in all of baseball, and that's really important for these Indians. You saw what Francona could do when they had uh, Cody Allen and uh, the big lefty Miller and how he can, and how he can uh, function with that. And then offensively, uh, I'm going to say Cesar Hernandez, he gives you so many options as to different spots of where he can bat in the order. So... They may move uh, uh, Lindor down to the two or three hole and let him lead off. They could bat him in the six hole and bring balance uh, to the lineup that they haven't had in a couple of years. All right, so I'm, I'm going to go with, with, with those. It's going to be interesting to see how that all shakes out and how Terry Francona adapts to the three batter rule out of his bullpen. I mean, you, you just mentioned two guys who throw over 100 miles an hour. Yeah, Karen Check and yeah, Classe. Yeah. yeah, so it'll yep. be interesting. Mike, as always, we appreciate your time. And, wow, it's Nature Stone. Hey, thanks, guys, and 
Wow, it's dangerous, though. Thank you. Hey, Mike, I, I went to a party the, uh, a couple of months ago at, at someone's house who had Nature Stone. I mean, it's awesome. It truly is. I appreciate that, D-Man. Thank you very much. We love it. If you ever need anything, you just give me a call. I'm happy to take care of you. Wow. Thanks, what? I mean, How about I, that? Hey, right. you'll, you'll be getting Mike, that call. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon, Mike. Thanks so Thanks, much. Mike. I look forward to it. Thanks, 216-575-0403 right. is the number to call. Uh, Northeast Factory Direct. You got them east, west, and south. Uh, more important, uh, go first to the uh, northeastfactorydirect.com website. Find out what uh, what you want, and you're going to pay, well, more than 50% off from the big box stores. Why is that? Alex started the business 20 years ago. One uh, one piece of furniture in a, in a uh, garage in Lakewood, and look what he's turned into, one of the great success stories in all of Northeastern Ohio. West 140th, one uh, location in Cleveland, Lakeland Boulevard in, East La in uh, Euclid, as well as Freeway Drive, that is in Macedonia. Or first go to northeastfactorydirect.com. We'll take a break. We'll come on back in a moment. Sokolowski University and the winner of the James Beard Foundation Award five years ago, actually about four years ago, only uh, five uh, restaurants in the country make it each and every year. What a prestigious honor that is. Mike and Bernie Sokolowski's University in Cleveland's oldest family-owned and operated restaurant since 1923. We'll come back in a moment. We'll take a look at the Facebook question of the day and your responses. More Sports and Les Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. Get Nature Stone and never replace your basement flooring again. Your concrete is uneven, damp, and not healthy. Carpet and tile don't last. Breed mold and mildew and give worthless warranties. Nature Stone permanently corrects uneven concrete and is not affected by dampness or moisture. And with Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty, there are no hidden maintenance costs. Act now and save up to 50% with our volume discount pricing. Must be installed by the end of February. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. A long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Downs and Casino has sports betting. Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Let's take a look at uh, this date in Les Levine history, February 17, 1961. Les asked his geometry teacher, how come Upper Sandusky is south of Sandusky. Historically, that becomes one of the earliest how come quickies in history. There is an answer to that, by the way. 216 575 is the number to call. Let's uh, check out our Facebook question of the day and what uh, people responded. With today being President's Day, who's on your Mount Rushmore of Cleveland sports? Do you have uh, four for me? You think about it. I mean, you all think, time, all timers yeah. in Cleveland we're, sports, we're, all sports. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, uh, Jim Brown and Otto Graham and LeBron have to be on there, and Feller. I would. I How would, about Jesse Owens? Well, now you're killing me here. Owens <laughs> and Dillard. Uh, we're going all the way to the Olympics. Yeah, well, Dillard um, is one of yeah, the. Yeah. I mean. No. Uh, uh, Owens, one of the all-time great runners. Yeah, uh, how could you leave Jesse Owens out? You're right. All right, Glenn Berger says Bob Feller, Otto Graham, Jim Brown, LeBron James, Mark Jelicek. That was close. Easy one. Brown, Feller, and James, only the very best. This is Mount Rushmore, after all, not the Hall of Fame or Halls of Very Good, as they are pr pr uh, presently constructed. Andy Meese says, from my lifetime, LeBron James, Corey Kluber, Jim Tomey, and Omar Vizquel. I can't pick anybody from the Browns because they haven't been very good in my lifetime. 
I'm not sure we use that as a caveat. Uh, Greg, uh, Rick May, filler, Jim Brown, LeBron James, and Paul Brown. Gregory Mead says Jim Brown, LeBron James, Otto Graham, and Lou Boudreau. Aaron Wood, LeBron James, Kenny Lofton, Jim Brown, and Paul Brown. Can't yeah. go wrong with that. I love K Love. I'm not sure, though, but uh, about Mount Rushmore, but K Love deserves to be mentioned among the Indians' all timers. Well, sure. as you know, we have the voicemail of truth and reason, and you can call us anytime. Of course, we do this show live from 6 until 7 p.m. Eastern Time. You can call us at our regular number, and of course, uh, you've got the voicemail of truth and reason number. Let's hear what uh, one of our callers had to say as they called in the voice of truth, ma truth and voicemail of truth and reason. I think the Browns finally, after 20 years, have gotten this right. I believe that uh, they have a lot of assistant coaches that should be very, very helpful. And then they pick the right people in the draft and they get some free agents and they mold this team into a winning organization. I like what's going on. It's been a long, long time, 20-year problem, but I do like it. Have a good day, sir. All right. I was going to call. I was going to butt in there, and I then laughed. I realized it's on tape. I laughed, and I appreciate the voicemail, Truth and Reason. I really appreciate the caller. I wasn't trying to make fun of the call. I'm simply saying I've heard that so many times. <laughs> Finally, so many different organizations. the Browns have it right. Yeah. Well, how do we know that? <laughs> exactly. You're talking about the same people making the same decisions. There's zero benefit of the doubt where the Haslam ownership right. is concerned. We all want it to happen. Zero. The mm -hmm. only way we're going to know if the Barry D. Podesta, uh, Stefanski alignment is working. There's is, that word alignment. Is victories. That's it. No, no amount of talk, no amount of, th oh, well, you know what? This looks good on paper or that looks good on paper. It's not going to matter until the games actually count. Let's go to Reynoldsburg, Ohio. We'll say hi to Mike. Mike, good evening. Evening, gentlemen. How are we doing tonight? We're doing so, well. Mike. How about you? All right. Uh, Dennis, nice, a nice rant on the uh, commissioner and Houston Astros. Not as good as Hoynes, but I tried. <laughs> pretty, uh, Manfred should be uh, embarrassed. Pretty, pretty close, though. Uh, the Miles Garrett incident? Yes. Uh, I've been in fights on the football field and officiated fights and all that stuff. Mason Rudolph, no, well, no one's saying this. Mason Rudolph said something. I'm not saying he said the word, but he said something. And you can tell where uh, Miles Garrett goes, goes off again a second time. So it's, uh, it's maybe it's one of those things where he, th he thought he heard what he heard and Mason I, said, I didn't say I, it. I don't know what the benefit is for the NFL to, to hide it if they have the inform if they have the tape of it. I, I see no reason that they should hide it if they did. Oh, I, no, I agree. I agree. But I, I'm saying he did say something. There's never uh, been a fight where not, no two words were exchanged. I, I well, don't. that may be, Mike, but I also don't wonder. I also wonder why would Mike Tomlin go to these extremes to defend Mason Rudolph against Miles Garrett? Well, I, I understand what you're saying. I completely understand what you're saying. But. I, 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 and I think, you know, it's one of those things where he thought he might have heard what he heard, and Mason saying, no, I didn't say that. It's, yeah. Well, I'm it's sure that's how, that. yeah, I'm sure that's how it came down. But who? this is a he said, my, he said. And, Mike, my point right. is this. My point is this. Garrett made the allegation in his meeting with the NFL before he was suspended, okay? He's right. got it on record is uh, saying that Mason Rudolph used the N word. Okay, that should be enough. <laughs> Once you, 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 it's on record. You don't have to come right. back after you've been reinstated and say, "Hey, in case you wondered, in case you forgot, I accused this guy of using the N word. I'm going to do it again." Yeah, that's what I don't understand. I don't either. Right. I, I, I agree with that. I agree. With, I, he should not have done the interview at all. Just let it die. Yeah, because maybe in July it's a, a different meaning if he if he repeats that stuff. Mike, we got to go. Thanks, Thanks so Mike. much for the call. Okay. Thanks, guys. Good I appreciate job. it. Bye. Let me just get this email in from uh, Mike. Let's start a conspiracy theory. For the past two years, the Dolans have been mysteriously saving forty-four million a year on payroll, including this year and next. The savings are over one hundred sixty million. I'd like to think they are saving for Lindor's ten years at thirty million dollars. <laughs> By next summer, we're over halfway there. 
That's you a conspiracy dream, theory. Senator. <laughs> <laughs> no, it ain't happening. He's, you know, Lindor, I hate to quote Paul Dolan. Yeah, enjoy, enjoy him, him in 2020, yeah. all right? But you know what? I'm going to enjoy him in 2020. Because here's too. the thing, Les. I long ago came to the terms of the MLB's uh, reality. And that is players come and go. Yeah. If you think players are going to be tied to your franchise for life, especially in the mid to smaller markets, you're, you're crazy. Toledo Mike uh, quotes Shawshank Redemption. Hope is a good thing and maybe the best of things. I'm not sure how it relates to this, right. but we'll come back. We'll uh, go to some How Come Quickies and more. And uh, D-Man with us uh, tomorrow night, Bud Shaw. Don't know about Wednesday, but Thursday, uh, Phil Bova, your friend of mine, uh, wrote a oh, book. Delicious. It's terrific. Uh, 216 200 is uh, where you can call anytime to leave a message. It's the voicemail of Truth and Reason. More sports and less Levine continues. One more, one more to go exclusively on Cleveland.com. Get Nature Stone and never replace your garage flooring again. Your concrete is cracked, uneven, and not safe. Paints and poly coatings don't last, are slippery, and give worthless warranties. Nature Stone permanently corrects cracked, uneven concrete, eliminates slipping hazards, and is easy to clean. And with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, there are no hidden maintenance costs. Act now and save up to 50% with our volume discount pricing. Must be installed by the end of February. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students kindergarten through 12th grade can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Bud Shaw tomorrow night, WKYC.com. Saw him on the uh, Sports Weekend show last night on WKYC. You see us live from 6 until 7 p.m. Eastern Time and the replay uh, archived throughout the day. And you can also follow us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash more sports and Les Levine with new content posted each and every day. Time for some How Come Quickies, D-Man. Tony in Shaker Heights says it's not funny, but it's a pet peeve of mine. How come when people receive an honor for achieving a miraculous, never-before-done feat, they refer to it as a humbling experience? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Toledo Mike, how, how come in college I studied astrophysics? According to my teacher, I took up space. Now, I thought when he went to the astro, I thought that was going to be a Houston Astros thing. I like that. Mr. Gullible. How come I stayed just one night at the YMCA because I didn't want to make a big song and dance out of it? How come I got fired at the candle factory because I re refused to work Wick ends? I like that. You like that one? All right. I love it. Oh, all right. I like that one. Got one more to go, maybe, if I can get it out. That's a Murr pun right there. That is a, Mike, a, a Chuck Murr pun, yeah. no question. John Patrick. How come the Astros' favorite baseball movie is Bang the Drum Slowly? <laughs> <laughs> or quickly if it's a fastball. All right, anything uh, you'd like to add? You started off the show totally laying into the commish. Yeah. I mean, Rob Manfred, listen, man, you got you to gotta subjugate your sizable ego, and you have to walk back some of these comments especially the one where you impugn the integrity of the World Series trophy, which bears the commissioner's name. It's a piece That's of metal. Insult, Just a piece of metal. Yeah, to call it a piece of metal is an insult to the players. You, you showed how out of touch you are, and you need to apologize for that because that was a disgrace. Great job by the D-man, Dennis Maniloff. When are you on uh, WTAM next? When they'll have me. Oh, get this. It's Wednesday night. 
and it's the Cavs at the All-Star break show. Oh. From 7 to 11. Special guest John Beeline. Uh, what are we going to be talking about mm -hmm. on Wednesday night? I right, wonder good. if John will call on the uh, celebrity hotline. I will next be on uh, 92.3 The Fan Friday from uh, 10 until 2. I'll be in with uh, Jeff Phelps in for Andy Baskin. All right, that'll do it for us. Great job by the guys in the back. Led awesome. by Brian and company in the back. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent.